To the casual observer, it would seem a bit odd to think that Italy would be the country involved in the first moon base, actually taking the leading role in constructing the first moon base. Doesn't seem really possible given Italy's background in space exploration, at least as far as the casual observer is concerned. But if you are really into space flight and waste most of your life reading articles, articles on the topic like myself, you will know that Italy has been heavily engaged in space exploration, especially when it comes to surviving in space and constructing space habitats capable of supporting astronauts in vacuum. But about a week ago, Teodoro Valente, the president of the Italian Space Agency, announced that Talis Alenia Space Italy would be working together with the Italian Space Agency to build the first living module for the lunar surface, and Talis Alenia could not be a better selection because this company has a tremendous amount of experience in providing livable spaces for astronauts in very hostile environments. We're going to learn all about this new announcement and what it means to the future of Artemis and mankind's permanent presence on the lunar surface right now. Good afternoon, spaceflight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Getting back into the spaceflight content now after quite a lot of alien content lately. Although, keep in mind, given all of the new stuff that keeps cropping up with 3i Atlas, it's likely that we may drift back to that topic sometime in the near future. But at the moment, we're going to be talking about things like this. Now, what you're watching right now is a vision of lunar bases that NASA and ESA and, frankly, content creators like myself tend to share with the viewing public the idea that eventually lunar resources, in situ resources that is, will be used to build very large structures on the moon designed for dozens of inhabitants and a thriving lunar economy. But to be honest, that sort of future is still pretty distant given the fact that no Artemis mission is designed to put any more than four astronauts on the surface of the moon and it's very likely that that's not going to be happening for a while. We're going to have two astronauts at most and then as we migrate towards the eventual goal of reaching Mars with the moon to Mars philosophy, the whole notion of just keeping a small number of astronauts alive on the surface of the moon until we have more ambitious vehicles like Starship capable of carrying large populations to the moon, well, that's going to be the primary focus, keeping small numbers of astronauts alive for a couple of months at a time. And this is something that Talis Alenia is very well suited to do. And not only that, they've already had a design that they've been working on for quite some time. And this is something called the multi purpose habitat and you're looking at it right now not only is it multi-purpose it is also mobile it's essentially a single pressurized vehicle with wheels on it and presumably its own transportation system and its own solar power system as well. Theoretically capable of keeping a couple of astronauts alive for a few weeks at a time on the lunar surface and also to provide them with modest transportation to locations far afield from where their human landing system happens to set them down. Because keep in mind, the human landing system is going to be only viable on flat safe terrain, which is a little hard to come by at the Lunar South Pole. Both Lunar Starship and also, frankly, the Blue Moon Lander are tall, top-heavy vehicles that you don't want to try to set down on any sort of grade. You're going to want to set it down on a flat surface, so something like the MPH will be able to provide safe, pressurized transportation for astronauts away from their landing vehicle to other locations that may be a lot more interesting. 
set to launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in 2033, so we're looking at eight years from now. The MPH will be the first structure purpose built for astronauts to live and work on the moon. Designed to last at least 10 years, it will link with other Artemis systems and serve as a hub for both scientific research and surface operations. Astronauts will be able to stay for weeks or perhaps even months at a time, carrying out experiments and exploration missions. And when nobody is on board, the habitat will keep running autonomously. It can also move across the lunar surface, as I said before, giving the crews more flexibility. Building a livable base on the moon means solving problems that few engineers have faced before. The habitat has to survive blistering daytime heat, but also freezing nights, something that astronauts have never had to survive before, and the destructive effects of lunar dust. It also has to withstand radiation, micrometeoroid strikes, and the moon's weaker gravity. The MPH module will be three meters wide and six meters long, talk about cramped quarters, and will weigh approximately 15 tons. It will be equipped with wheels for precise positioning, enabling it to support manned missions in various locations on the lunar surface. The module will be designed for one mission involving two astronauts over the course of a year, each lasting between 7 and 30 days. In emergency situations, it will also be able to support larger crews for short periods of time. Once deployed on the moon, MPH is expected to have a service life of approximately 10 years. In July of 2024, Talis Alenia announced that the project had passed its initial design stage, and on September 18th, NASA's Mission Concept Review Board concluded that the module's design met the necessary criteria for the Artemis program and approved the next stage of its development. And on July 25th, about a week ago, the Italian Space Agency announced the signing of a new contract with Talis Alenia Space Italia for the preliminary design phase of the MPH module. The stage of the project will include the development of critical technologies that will enable the module to withstand the harsh conditions of the lunar environment, protecting its inhabitants from radiation and micrometeorite impacts. Quote, the future lunar module, the result of the historic relationship between NASA and ASI, which is, by the way, the name for the Italian Space Agency, is part of Italy's long-term investment strategy, which allows us to play an increasing leading role in the new space race and, moreover, to be a fundamental part of the Moon to Mars strategy of the Artemis program, again, according to ASI President Teodoro Valente. The preliminary design phase is expected to last approximately two years. Talis Alenia Space Italia will lead this phase in collaboration with a company called Alltech, a joint venture between Talis Alenia and ASI, as well well as other Italian industrial partners. But this is not the full extent of Italy's ambitions on the moon. They're actually going for broke as far as this project is concerned. Just last year, actually towards the end of last year, Italy's National Space Agency also came up with the Selene project, which aimed to develop small nuclear fission reactors to power settlements on the moon. In 2023, the Selene project was among the winners of an ASI funding call aimed at developing alternative energy solutions for the moon that overcame the limitations of traditional technologies. The project focuses on developing the Moon Energy Hub, or MENDA, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, which would provide a stable energy source for future lunar settlements using small nuclear fission reactors called surface nuclear reactors, or SNRs. The ASI-funded Selene project is led by by the Italian National Agency for New Technologies and Sustainable Economic Development, with contributions from the Department of Energy at the Polytechnic University of Milan and Talis Alenia Space Italia. Once again, they're getting involved. There are also four research centers involved in the project. Lasting three years, the Selene project will allow the development of advanced technologies and solutions also in areas such as sensors, high automation 
automation and wireless power transmission that will allow the grounding through an experimental test of one of the most challenging technologies for SNR, namely heat disposal, with the aim of validating system performance and increasing technological maturity. Quote, by combining technological innovation, strategic vision, operability, reliability, and compactness in an extremely demanding environment such as the Lunar One, the MENH, I think that's just the best way to say that, aims to become a cornerstone for future space explorations and a point of reference for defining a scenario, clear operating, and a roadmap to reach it, said Mariano Tarantino, head of the ENEA Nuclear Systems Division. Quote, the coordination of Celine allows us to confirm the role of ENEA in the nuclear sector for space at national and the international level, becoming the glue between the industrial fabric and the world of research engaged in the space sector. A path already started with the ASI-ENEA agreement for the realization of a first feasibility study for a nuclear reactor to power the moon bases. Okay, that was very verbose, but when it comes right down to it, the objective is to come up with a feasible way of generating nuclear power on the moon. And I agree, heat disposal is one of the biggest challenges for doing that, but that is the objective of this program is to master that process. Quote, Italy is strongly committed to the exploration of the moon and the creation of a permanent lunar base, according to Angelo Oliveri, head of scientific missions at ASI. Quote, regarding energy supply, the currently available solutions based on the use of solar energy do not allow us to achieve the challenging energy goals for future activities on the lunar surface due to the alteration of 14 days of light and 14 days of darkness. And I totally agree agree with that, by the way. I think it's going to be very difficult for humans to survive in the 14 days of lunar night without nuclear power. I think solar energy or batteries or any other type of solution is going to have a hard time getting the job done, especially given the extreme life support requirements of keeping people alive during the lunar night. So it seems that Italy is jumping into this project with both feet. And I'll tell you something, I'm pretty excited about it, and I'd like to learn more about it, hopefully, at the IAC conference in Sydney coming up in less than two months that you folks have generously supported. Thank you so much for that. Also, keep in mind that there are less than two weeks left in our 200K celebration merchandise. That store is going to be closing down, and the merchandise will no longer be available as of August 15th. So if you want to get any of that, make sure to check the description. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay angry about space.